Uh, hello, this is a, an unusual uh, video here. It's a note on a proposed uh, proposed plugin for OpenCPN. And it came up and uh, several questions were posed that I started to answer and it took too long to answer in text. So I'm going to make a short video. And so the idea is to make, the proposal was um, to make a plugin that allows the users of OpenCPN when looking at a weather map like a surface analysis or forecast map that we can download very easily as I'll show in a moment from a, a geo reference from a plug another plugin in OpenCPN if we could have a another special plugin or feature of that plugin that lets us determine what the surface wind speed should be based solely on the um, isobar spacing and the uh, latitude and so this is a subject we've worked on a lot in uh, in our textbook which I'll reference here in a minute but so here are the questions um, well, what's a name, what's a formula, how's it going to be implemented, and so on. So that's the questions I want to address. And I'll start out with just, and so we got to put together some tools to do this so you can both do it and test it. <clears throat> do it and test it. So what we need to do is have a grib file, a grib file and a weather map, and we want to overlay them and we want them at the same time. And I have this set up, and I don't really want to break that again, but let me just show, uh, just it's an opportunity to show a few other things. One of the ways, within within OpenCPN, there's a way to make a to make an email to uh, send to SailDocs, but another way to, uh, if you've got an internet connection, <clears throat> it's a lot simpler just to use, uh, just to use their view facts, the airmail's view facts as a free viewer and then uh, you can go in here and just download a file from here from view facts any kind of file or different models and save it and then you come back and open it up in uh, in uh, OpenCPN and that's what I've done here so I've got a weather facts I mean I've got a GFS file and if we look here <coughs> excuse me um, uh, it's valid at 12 o'clock on the 18th, that's today. And then overlaid on it is this GRIB file, which is, uh, uh, again, 12 o'clock, March 18th. So those two are in sync. And the idea of this plugin was to, um, now, when, you're, when you don't have the GRIB files, you don't see all these little uh, feathers here. You see just a map. And we want to look at this map and to say, OK, for this kind of spacing of isobars here to here, at this latitude, which we read <coughs> down here, um, which we read down at the bottom there, what, what is the wind that that's, uh, what, winds, what wind speed should be there for that on the surface? Now, um, <coughs> And uh, I've loaded this map, by the way, using the WeatherFax plugin. You just click this, you just highlight the map you want to hit select it and load it, and it loads the map automatically. So I have, I have those two loaded now. Whoa. <clears throat> Nasty feature of Windows 10. Okay. Um, and so we want this distance here. So let's go back now. So the question now addressing the thing, what's the theory? And so I'm going to uh, use here. Here is our textbook. This is a reference. Is this te textbook here? And it's in chapter two. And uh, let's see. Uh, and so here's a table in chapter two where you have the isobar spacing in degrees and then the uh, latitude down here and here's the wind speed. And in the caption here's a formula and I have another picture in a minute that shows this a lot bigger and easier to see. But anyway, there's a formula we want to use. <coughs> Excuse me. And that is the geostrophic wind. That's a wind with no friction up in the, you know, up a, above the boundary layer, uh, a few thousand feet up in the air. Uh, but down on the surface, we have some friction that slows it down. And the factor that we use is 0.8. And I want to stress that because most books and um, most books and uh, 
tables or little nomograms on the British charts and things like that. They use a much lower factor, like 0.6 or 0.7. Now, and we want to use 0.8, and I'm not even sure that you might want to crank it up a little more than that. But 0.8 is what we've been using historically for some years after doing this exact type of comparison we're doing now for, you know, a thousand times or so. Well, some number, some big number. All right, so there's the, there's the reference. Then, uh, so let's see what I've got set up here. And then I set this up to show, okay. So here then, here's the formula that's in back in that book. That the formula is, is equal to this friction factor, which we have now at 0.8 uh, times 40 knots divided by the distance d, that's the distance between these two isobars, four millimeter isobars here to here, uh, that's the distance expressed in degrees of latitude. And we do it that way because that's always easy to measure on a chart. You don't have to worry about scales or things like that. You can just use degrees of latitude. Now, to make this comparison today, and with, with what I'm talking about, I put in the actual distance here. So this is a distance in nautical miles. And then this thing you'll see is just uh, this divided by 60. <clears throat> and then here's the latitude. And this calculates the pressure. So what this little Excel spreadsheet is doing, this, this formula right here is the one that's right here, up here. It's just bigger letters. <clears throat> so that's a process. That is the process. Um, and well, part of the proposed uh, proposed system, and a way to test it. All right, so we're back here then, and now we're looking at this. And you have two things to do. We could look at. Oh, now here's a case where see these isobars. The real thin lines here are the isobars from the uh, GFS model. The GFS model. And these isobars, um, this is another story, not part of right now, but these isobars, even though they're in sail docks, they're called PRMSL, the actual parameter that's being used these days is MSLET. And MSLET has more detail to it than the old PRMSL. So that's why we see structure and some bending around here and so forth. But that's, that's another topic. These are improved. These new isobars are improved. Um, Sail Docs is using MSLET, the, the better one. Well, frankly, I think it's a better one. And But, however, it's still called PRMSL so that it doesn't confuse different browsers. Or not browsers, but different uh, uh, graphics uh, grid viewers. If you go to XYGRIB and download the same file from XYGRIB, you'll see that these isobars here on the GFS, same exact map, will be very much smoother because XYGRIB is still using uh, PRMSL. Okay, so that's just a tangent, a formula tangent. Okay, so here's what, how this app might work. You, you would say, do something like use the measure. Okay, so we're in here, we would have some button that turns on something equivalent to the measurement tool. And then that would measure from here to here. Well, okay, just, I gotta, okay. That would measure something from here to here that says these isobar, these four milli, millibar isobars are 200 nautical miles apart. And that, oh yeah, 200 nautical miles. There's 203, you know, something like that. 203, 200, 201. Okay, escape. Now, uh, so the question is, what wind should be in here? What wind should be in it? Now, what's the latitude? The latitude's down here. And by the way, for this test, for doing this test, you're going to be better off setting your display to decimal degrees for the latitude. <clears throat> that just saves a few steps. So if we're looking in this region right here, that's 31. Oh, okay, let's call it, what, 31.5. 31.5. So let's go to our spreadsheet. And here, say that the latitude is 31.5. And we just found that this spacing was 200. And then that's that. So this should be 18.4 knots. So this wind here should be 18.4. Now, now you have to look, look here. Uh, see, read it. We read the wind right up here. Look at that. 19, 18, 17, 18, 19. So that works. In other words, <clears throat> if you didn't have this, this grid file shows shows 20 nominal 20, nominal 20. But we have to remember that that nominal 20, that the two feathers, two ten, two long feathers, that means anything from 17.5 to 22.5. 
So don't, we can't call this 20. We, you know, if anything, we want to say nominal 20. And the value, if you put it, your tip right on the tip of that point right there, see it's 18 knots. Now that's phenomenal. This whole business of converting the isobar spacing at a given latitude to a, uh, to a, uh, Wind speed, that's like plus or minus 10%. That would be really lucky, good. So that's, that's pure luck. And, uh, and again, so we ought to, we've got to look at the wind. We've got to look at accuracy in the wind speeds here of something like plus or minus 2 knots or 10%, whatever's bigger. So in our comparison, that's, a, that's the kind of background we have to look at. So that one actually worked out real well. And the the direction is going to be, it's going to be, in principle, you draw a line in here and it's going to be across the isobar about 20 degrees, 20, 30 degrees. This guy looks like he's a little bit across. You know, these guys look like they're almost parallel. In principle, they should be a little bit more like this, like going across this isobar a little bit, about 20 degrees across. Uh, that's going to vary around the map. Yeah, and so forth. So that's that one. Then you could go up. Let's just take another one up here somewhere where it's a lot tighter. Now up here, what do we have here? That says 30. If I look at the meter here, that's something like 30. Let's, let's just check this one now. Okay, so and also even though other spaces like here, here are the, M, the MSLET you know, pressures uh, don't agree that much with the PRMSL pressures. But up here, the spacing is about the same. So let's just try a point right here. Okay, so right there, right at that dot, that latitude, 55, I'm going to write that down, 55.3, uh, 55.3 degrees. And what's our spacing? I'm going to right click, measure and go from here to here. So what do I have there? 59, okay, oh, pretty, pretty, I should zoom in. Oh, wait a minute. There's no reason I can't zoom in on this business. Oh, uh, what's going on? Um, Not sure. Let me get out of this escape mode. I want to zoom in a little bit. And, okay, where's my 30 isobars? Here's where I was, I think, somewhere somewhere right here. It looks like the model's ending right there, too. Oh, that just, be, that just means where I dragged the picture, right? When I dragged the region to ask for the, ask for the grib file, that's probably as high as I asked for. Okay, so we want this latitude right here. Let's see, we got it. Fit. Oh, now I'm higher. I was, I was lower before. But let's do this one. Let's just, I'm going to redo it. That's 56. So I'm going to change it to 56 degrees. That's my latitude. Now I'm going to go measure from here, right measure from here, and then drag it to here. And what do we have here? It looks like it's about 58.5. Now again, 59, 58, 60. That's okay. One end to one end, something like 58, 59. 59, okay, 58, call it 58. Again, there's a big uncertainties floating around here, 58. So let's go back down to this program here. Again, this has to be done many times because it's going to vary all over the, all over the, the oh, wait a minute, D distance. Oh, look at that, it's one, rounded off to one, that makes sense. And then the latitude was 56, enter. And that says 39.3 knots. So the wind here should be 39.3. And what do we get here? 32. Yeah. 30. See, okay, look, 36, 35. Anyway, that's the idea. That's the ballpark. Again, plus or minus 10%, that's going to be plus or minus 3 knots. So we're agreeing. We're agreeing. Uh, and so that is the technique. Let's see, do I need to say, oh, let me come back to the book. Let me come back to the book here and show you. Okay, so this, this theory of this little diagram here is assuming, uh, <clears throat> assuming we have um, straight isobars. Now, um, 
the and stable and standard sta st stability to the air. So I'll refer readers to this book to show about the corrections if the isobars are curved. And here's a way to estimate the curvature and so forth. And here's a here's a dramatic case where the curvature did it from some older map I had. And so here's a curvature. Now if the isobars are real curved. When they're real curved in a low, that reduces the wind. When they're real curved in a high, it increases the wind. But again, a big, even a big curvature is only going to change this 10 or 15 percent. Likewise, the stability of the air, we're using 0 0.8, 0 0.8 for like average air, average air. And then you can go very stable <clears throat> or unstable. You see, and that's going to change this. It's going to change these values. And then there's uh, there's various <coughs> excuse me various ways to evaluate whether or not something is stable or unstable. But generally, uh, these <coughs> excuse me these corrections are going to be within the uncertainty. And then if you want to fine tune it, we could keep in mind those those corrections in this table. And I'm not sure, I think we must have developed formulas for that at some point, but I don't know if we have formulas there in the book. All right, so that's the end of that. That's a report on this proposed method of um, a proposed plug-in to um, immediately assign that wind. And again, the reason is that when you have this kind of map, let me just take away the grib. How do I take away the grib uh, completely? Maybe I just shut this off. Yeah. See, so when you download this, you would want to see what wind does this does this uh, forecast here. These winds that they see, now this is an Atlantic surface analysis. The surface analysis is putting only ship reports. So the only place they have a feather here is where there is an actual ship report. When you go to a forecast, when you go to like a, any forecast map, they only put the wind down there when it's uh, above 33 knots above 33 knots. So you won't see any feathers at all for 20 knots, 25 knots, 10 knots, things like that. On the, any forecast map, 24, 72, 48, whatever, only feathers for that. So there, this is actually, this kind of application, this kind of tool, is actually maybe even more valuable for uh, forecast maps than for these surface analysis maps. All right, I'll end it there.